G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Just about everyone who's played War Thunder has had at some point a negative experience, whether that be teams that just seem to vanish before your eyes, or something that doesn't quite work out, but happens a lot for some reason. Or maybe you've got ping or server or computer issues that just make your time in War Thunder that much more frustrating. Today, I'm going to be showing you something that happened in one of those days, where I was recording some footage for the MiG-23 MF video. I was recording it for the uh, MiG-21 BIS SAU part, where I basically say, hey, this plane is a lot more worth flying, and uh, to me, it still holds true. But of course, this was filmed before the MiG-23 spam, uh, but the teams are not that much different. You can see my team composition is made up of a lot of 11.0s, some 10.7s, some 10.3s. These are some planes that are a little bit less capable, so I think I've just been dealt a little bit of a raw deal with the matchmaker. That being said, I'm still not going to throw away my chances, and I'm still going to do the best I can by my team to attempt to get myself some better uh, results. Maybe we can get a win, you never know. Maybe this could be a great game where I get 6-7 kills, but we'll have to see how that pans out, I suppose. Now, in the MiG-21 BIS, I really like being on the flanks, on the outskirts, and then working my way in. I just see all those IR missiles that I have there and just think that anyone with flares can use them or can uh, basically make them null and void by paying attention. And so in order to get them to not pay attention, I like to come from behind and give them a little bit of surprise butt sex. Now, in this case here, we're going to be on Krimsk where we've got this mountain range that we can hide around. And of course, that means that we are invulnerable Oh, we are, yeah, invulnerable to planes that are going to be coming from the, the land that have pulse Doppler radars. We have these cliffs that we can hide basically underneath or just at sea level, and that means that we can stay away from planes that have these sort of functionalities, and that makes us a little bit more sneaky brookie. So these A2D and F4J combo here that are coming in, I'm not going to go for them. And honestly, I don't recommend that you go for these types of enemies that are going for ground targets early on in the match, unless they're right in front of you. The thing is, these planes are going to be the first on the battlefield, which means that there are going to be bigger fish that are going to come in that are going to scoop you up pretty damn easily. So what you need to be careful of is someone who's going to come in from above or from behind, basically wherever the enemy's airfield is, and it's going to sort of catch you by surprise while you're busy dealing, dealing with someone else, it's going to come up and sort of surprise you. And that's going to ren render you either dead or, you know, useless. Speaking of useless, the R60 MK is anything but useless, where I get myself a nice little critical hit. It was a little bit aggressive for the R60s, and these missiles, whilst they're okay, they're not particularly strong, even in the head-on circumstances. You need to be a little bit more frugal with them. You can't just sort of fire them head on at any aspect and expect them to work because you've got to remember that as they close the distance, they are getting closer and closer to your enemy who is also closing the distance. Now, speaking of closing the distance, I close the distance very quickly on that carcass there. And this F5 is also getting very, very nice and close. So I'm going to go for a nice, quick, uh, spicy sort of last minute missile head on. But he nulls and null and voids that with his guns for some odd reason. And now I have an F5 on my ass. So, yep. There go all my advantages, and that is all my luck used up for the rest of the week, because I managed to hit that guy and survive, and of course, that F5 is now on my 6, and I guess, I guess you can call it karma. I've had my luck, now it's time to have my suffering. And as I look at the team list, suffering indeed is felt. So, whilst I've gathered some uh, distance away from everyone else, I have this F5C who I can engage in a brief dogfight with, but I quickly decide it's not for me, and I'm just going to put the nose down, get out of here, and hopefully, hopefully maybe make it back to my team where I can get one or two more kills before making a final stand with the guns. Now the F5 here is closing the distance as well, and there's two F5s that means uh, coming in for me, but I'm going to quickly make that one with the quick head-on missile. So beautiful R60MK doing its job and giving the F5C minimal time to react, but the other one is very rapidly closing the distance, and there's an F5, uh, F4E coming in nice and quick too. So I have to prep another R60MK and hope to God that this guy does not pay attention. And it looks like my distraction tactics are not working either because he manages to pre-flare and that's the end of the R60 there. 
So, 1R60 and about 7 enemies left. Am I going to do it? Obviously not. The MiG-27 looks like he's in a pretty sad state. My other friend in the MiG-27 has gone back to base, and it's just me. Yep, it's not going to end well. I'm just going to end up sort of being a little bit of a struggle bus, and whilst the MiG-21 BIS is pretty damn good, it's not going to carry against four other enemies in a dogfight like this. It's not meant for that. And in fact, no plane should be doing this and uh, can get away with it. Let's be honest. This is the way that War Thunder works. It is a numbers game. And that's just the, the way it works. So quick head on on the F4. Maybe we can get something here, but nothing from the, uh, nothing from the guns. The F5A is on my ass here. It's not going to end well. I've had to switch the afterburner off just so I can get away from this AIM-9G. And the F4J here is coming in. The F4E is coming in. The F5 will be coming in very, very shortly. And of course, there's going to be another guy coming in with a nice Polk Doppler radar moment. It's just not going to end well. So this F5, I barely managed to get out of the way. Have a look at my airspeed. It's just not going anywhere. And my R60 is not prepped in time. So I have to turn my attention away from this uh, F5 to another one. And here it is. I'm getting so many, so many things that I have to keep an eye on. And unfortunately, the F4J finishes me off, but not before taking, not someone down with me, but uh, getting a little bit of a critical hit here. So that was basically every match that I had in that plane and every other plane that I had tried. So you know what? Screw being in the air. I'm gonna take it to the ground. And <laughs> take it to the ground I am. This is the Object 279. It's a rare event tank. It's got a black camo from the event uh, that you had to unlock there. And my god, is this thing very, very special. It's 8.7, it's got a stabilizer, it's got APHE, it's got an auto loader. It basically pens anything at this tier that's worth shooting at, I suppose. And my god, isn't this thing quite the monster. It's a very handholdy tank, I will have to say. And speaking of handholdy, the uh, Leopard A101 is going to be holding his mama's hand because, because he dead and he paying a repair cost, so <laughs> goodbye to him. Now, speaking of the Roycat here, we have a little situation with him <laughs> needing a bit of a helping hand. And so, of course, I'm going to give him a helping hand. I'm going to use my big, big Russian boy here and push him out of the way, back into safety, let him repair. I love a little bit of teamwork like that. It's really, really nice and it's always lovely to see. So. We're going to move here over to this little spot here, and I know if I can clear this street, that means I can shut away the enemy team from a lot of the uh, of the map. Now, there is a Marta A1 here who's looking pretty fresh, so he's firing missiles. I'm going to try and get this missile uh, sort of shot out, but hey, I managed a second shot here where I've dunked it into the engine block, so the engine block's absorbed all of that. And I think I took a side shot from a little bit further forward from another enemy that we will talk about a little bit later. Now I've aimed up nice and high to try and kill the guy in the turret, but it looks like I man managed to aim up a little bit too high. And we're gonna go and finish him off now with another shot straight into the money shot, right above the engine block, straight to the crew compartment. Lovely little kill there. And of course the tow missiles being absolutely null and void due to the amount of armor that I've got here. So I'm just gonna keep looking here at this little gap, see if I can pick up anyone else. And noticing that no one's there, I turn my attention to the little corridor here where I managed to get shot by, I believe it's a WMA-301. Now, this type of tank is a very wheelie boy, he's very fast, but he's got a tall profile. And so that means that I can I can uh, get that to my advantage. Not only that, but he's got very thin side armor. So I'm going to shoot him with the machine guns, and then I realize that I can actually pen his sides with the machine guns. And this is a 14.5 millimeter cannon. I believe it was actually designed to take out the Panther from the side at reasonably close range. So uh, that being said, it's absolutely good for IFVs if it's going to be good for the Panther. So goodbye little Mr. WMA and uh, hello kill number two. Oh, kill number three actually. Now I'm using that little tow feature which is really nice. It's good to have and of course having that uh, machine gun kill there is really really nice and satisfying. So I'm absolutely starting to unwind here, starting to relax. And switching it up a bit is really doing it for me. Now, as this uh, as this TAM 2IP switches into, uh, oh no, I fucked up mode, I managed to get myself a lovely little kill, resulting in kill number four. It's a really, really nice tank, this thing. If you've got it, man, you have got an absolute gem. And if you don't have it, oh man, I feel bad 
but I don't think I would spend the money on this thing. It's it's nice, don't get me wrong, but man, it is expensive on the marketplace and it will remain expensive because it's a very, very good tank. So now that I've pushed through this little alleyway, I've pushed into this little, I don't know what I want to call it, maybe a, maybe a block, maybe a little park, maybe a little, I don't know, a square of some sort, into this little block here of the map. This this is where the south side of this map really makes it stand because you push from one little spot where it's that little bottleneck where it's safe to go through to about three or four different spots where you can pop out of which leaves your opponents with a little bit of a mess to clean up in the way of uh, you know closing those little gaps. Now the WMA that uh, I shot at originally died which is very lovely but I'm going to push through, see if I can get myself something else, because I swear I got shot at through that smoke, but I don't think I did. I think I'm just uh, not paying attention. Now, absolutely not paying attention here, because this TAM 2 IP has managed to get shot off onto me, and it's only a matter of time before I die. Thankfully, the BMP2 is on the money and uh, saves my ass. Speaking of ass, I got shot in the ass, so I'm just going to run away, and there's no other tank in the game that I know that you can get shot in the ass and still survive like this. Maybe the mouse? I don't know. Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit to some uh, traveling. So let's, let's fast travel a little bit and uh, goof the shot here on this next PTL2. I believe it is a PTL2, this thing. So gonna give him a little bit of a what for with the machine gun. And it looks like he's still up until I notice that barrel. He's been barreled. So that gives me plenty of time to reload my uh, KPVT, getting myself another nice little kill here. Oh man, I am thoroughly enjoying this tank, even as someone who doesn't really play tanks that much. I'm having an absolute blast, just because this thing can bully those light tanks, but also has the speed and the agility, as well as of course the reload, to deal with other MBTs. So just as I reload my, my gun here, I managed to get myself kill number 6, and can I make this thing kill number 7 with the big light panzer here? It looks like all I need to do is overcome my gun depression, but the, the Glight Panzer's taken out my barrel once again. So that relegates me to a repair simulator. This tank is so beefy, it can just take so much damage and survive without even sort of breaking a sweat. Now, I have noticed a, I believe it's a PZG-09, I think it's the Chinese Gepard thingy, and I've managed to put a shot into it. Unluckily for me, the fuse hasn't triggered. And this has made me think, Man, I definitely need to take some high explosive in this thing just for those lightly armored vehicles. But I'll tell you what, you don't need it when you're firing front on at a big light Panzer 57. That thing finally got what was coming for it, and that gives me kill number seven. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm basically one kill away, or maybe two or three kills away from a nuke. And whilst I don't get the nuke because the timer runs out, I managed to get myself a really relaxing game. And that's the main thing. If you guys are having trouble playing War Thunder, there are plenty of ways that you can switch the game up. It's just so damn diverse. I even, I even tried playing Naval to uh, switch it up a little bit. So that tells you how desperate I was. But this game really sealed the cake for me. It really did it. And that would be my most solid advice. Switch it up a little bit before, if you guys are wearing headphones, I get struck by lightning. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.